I was hoping to do a few tutorials in this piece of software I've been loving lately called Style3D, but apparently they're going to be changing the interface soon. So I didn't want to do too much because one thing I really hate watching tutorials online is when they've come out with a new version of the software and nothing's where it is in the video and I'm lost and I spent the whole time scratching my head trying to figure out what they're doing. Despite that, um, I recently did a simulation of a pair of trousers for work and I thought some people might appreciate seeing my approach and some of the steps that I struggled with. Um, even if you're not using the same software, just watching somebody else's work has always been a source of learning and inspiration for me. So in the hopes that maybe you'll find something useful, uh, here's my pant workflow. Normally, if you're going to get into having multiple layers of things like pocket bags and linings and stuff, it's the best idea to simulate those onto the avatar first. However, um, if you're going to be doing any kind of fitting, then you don't want to have too, too many pieces that you have to adjust. So I tend to simulate the outer garment first, do any fitting work that I have to do, and then take it apart again, and then start with the lining or the, the pockets and the inside things. So here we're seeing I'm just sewing together some of the shell pieces. And then once I get it onto the avatar, then I'll start making pocket bags. Uh, while you don't need things like pocket bags and linings and stuff for a simulation, it can often add just that extra level of be believability when you see the bulk of the pocket bag through or it affects how something hangs or drapes. Uh, so I find it can often really be worth the extra effort, even though it can sometimes be frustrating. Uh, when you've got multiple layers, especially like in this pant, when I start getting into the multiple layers of pocket bags and facings and things, I start getting collision issues and you have to really have things layered correctly and sewn correctly. Not necessarily exactly as you would in a production scenario, uh, but as close as possible to it. Um, so I'll draw in some, some lines and some shapes and things here, getting my pieces ready, then I will duplicate everything. You may notice that this looks kind of like Chloe and Browser had a baby. Um, I get the impression that the company that created this took what they felt were the best elements of Chloe and the best elements of Browser. And I, I mean, certainly, at least Chloe had borrowed a lot from the Adobe interface and the hotkeys, which made it a lot easier for me anyway. Uh, to, to learn the system because a lot of the commands just felt comfortable from having used Photoshop and Illustrator and things for a long time. Um, so knowing that they're going to change this interface, I'm hoping that it still feels somewhat familiar um, because so far I haven't had any training in the software at all and I've been able to find my way around. And it's somewhat intuitive. I, I don't know if if I didn't have any Chloe browser training, I would find it as easy to use. But um, more often than not, if I'm wondering if there's a function somewhere that I have been able to do in some software somewhere, I go poking around, I typically find it. Uh, so one might ask, okay, what's the advantage of this software over another one? One of the things I find with Style 3D is it's just so fast and so zippy. I tend to spend a lot of time making a lot of changes and going back and forth from a very high particle distance or a very large mesh to a very small mesh. And I find that in Clove, for instance, I, I spend a lot of time just staring at the screen while it's synchronizing or thinking or waiting or doing stuff. And Style 3D is just really zippy. It's really fast. Um, and I also find it's a lot more accurate at um, even higher particle distance, so a, a larger mesh. Uh, one thing I can find often frustrating when working in 3D is that uh, I'm working away and everything looks great until I go to a high quality render, you know, reduce the, the mesh size, and all of a sudden things don't fit like they were and I have to make adjustments well you don't really want to be making adjustments at a five particle distance because it just takes forever but then if you switch back to 20 and then try to make your adjustments you don't see what the problems are so you're not sure if you're correcting it or not and I find 
I tend to see things more accurately, even at a 20 particle distance in style 3D, but reducing it to five doesn't impact the speed that terribly, at least on my system. So I find I can actually work at that size. So I'm seeing much more accurate results and really liking the the interface. Uh, that said, I've got um, I've got a RTX 3080 graphics card, so one of the nicer ones and a, and a fairly decent chunk of memory. Um, so you know, maybe on an older machine or an older graphics card, I wouldn't want to do too much work at a five particle distance. But uh, on my machine, it's it's it works pretty nicely. I've actually sped up this video. It's running at twice the speed that I worked at, and I cut out a few bits just to shorten it down, but there's still a good hour of footage. So I'm not going to talk over the whole thing. I'll let it run in silence. Maybe that's uncomfortable. I don't know. And um, I'll pop back in if there's things that I think I need to explain uh, at the moment that I'm doing them. Until then, enjoy my pants. So here I'm going to create an extension for the waistband. And while most people say, well, hey, you don't need to do this. You can just use the double sided feature. And while that's true, I find that you don't get quite the same results uh, using double sided, especially when you've got top stitching. It doesn't simulate the same well, same way. Um, and I just find even though it's extra work and sometimes extra trouble with the layers, uh, you just get better results by actually having two pieces, if there are two pieces in your garment. Also notice I'm struggling here a little bit with a buttonhole. Um, it was tough to tell that it was just that that extension piece was simulating on top of the waistband instead of inside, uh, which is why it took me a few minutes to figure out, okay, well, why is the buttonhole here and why am I not seeing it on the other side? So eventually I figured it out and it just took a little layer adjustment for 
the extension lining piece to simulate on the correct side. Also notice here, it's kind of freaking out a little bit. With smaller pieces, if your particle distance is set too high, it can just give you a lot of problems and they'll be dancing around. So if you see that, or just in general, when simulating, if you've got collision issues or things that don't make a lot of sense and you can't figure out why, try reducing the particle distance just to see if they settle down and often, often that'll do it. Here I'm just going to create a line 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge and chop it down. These are just going to be little inside internal lines that I will sew my belt, loop to, belt loops to later on in the process. And when that's done, I will start the process of making my back pocket bags. But before that, I think that would be a good place to split the video. So this will be the end of part one. Uh, part two will begin with the back pocket bags.